we're back, baby. It's the Charity Stripe Pitcher Free Throws because they are free. Fisher, DJ, Nikki, Snacks, Kreider. I'm at Fenway Park. Nick is at his apartment. It's cold in Boston. Uh, it's a little chilly, as you can but see. You got a t-shirt on, though. I know, because I'm braving the weather. I'm trying to I'm trying to thicken my skin. I, you can't see it here. It's maybe a little shiny, but I put some You do have soft in. skin. Yeah, Vaseline has been helping uh, the cold weather in Boston. But Fenway Park, the Sox... Six in a row, pretty good. Much to my surprise, I thought we were going to be kind of terrible. Our pitching has been horrible. Um, but I definitely want to recap with you what I think, and we could start bigger picture, has been an unbelievable month of baseball, in my opinion. Some of the best first month we've ever we've seen in years. Yeah, and you know what? As much as we poop on Manfred all the time, this looks good on him. Yeah. You know, the, all the new rule changes have been – awesome you know there's not a ton of violations now on that pitch clock offense has been up i think the intensity of the game has gone up um you know you're you're seeing a lot more productivity out of out of offense and and lineups and it just seems like a more competitive game and you know our guy will middlebrooks of the wake and rig podcast also on believe said it best you know that 30 minutes that have been shaved off of all these games you're not missing plays you're not missing pitches you're still getting nine innings you're missing guys scratching their nuts in the outfield you're missing guys readjust their batting gloves you're missing the pitcher walk around the mound for a minute long before he throws the next pitch so this is really it's been really good for the game and i saw my first live game this season on monday when the padres beat the reds it was a great game and i could not notice one bit that it was shortened or that there was anything taken away still the same experience on the ballpark and it's even better experience when you're at home watching tv because you don't have to sit down for three hours opposed to sitting down for 2 30 or 2 45 mm -hmm. so that's yeah. my two cents uh, i mean i couldn't agree more on all fronts i'm glad you've gotten to experience it i'm waiting for my first experience <clears throat> at the ballpark to see how it affects me but i admittedly like especially like for me it's not like you see the padres right that's your team like i'm not seeing the red Sox. my vested interest is not as high so when i'm just going to see the dodgers play whoever and if the game is not great don't get me wrong i love going i love being at the ballpark but if it's a if it's kind of a boat race and it's such a schlep to get out to dodger stadium like i wouldn't i'm not going to mind getting out of there in two hours and 30 minutes two hours and 20 minutes versus three oh, hours yeah. and 30 minutes Josh, I've got good news for you too, man. The Red Sox are coming to San Diego in two weeks. I know. I think I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to figure it out. I'm gonna have to go figure for a day. out what day of the week are they going. I think it's a weekend. I think it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, I can make the drive with you on Sunday, probably. Okay. I mean, look, you I, I, you know, I'm down whenever. I mean, it's just a short two-hour drive. I'm going to San Diego next week to see the Peppas. And then the following weekend, I'm seeing Dead & Co. on Friday. But after that, I think I'm pretty I, – I, I, it's my only opportunity to really see them this year. So it, it'd be stupid for me not to go Yeah, until they, come to, until they come to the Angels, I think. Uh, but, yeah, I would love – I've not seen a game in Petco Park yet, which is also kind of blasphemous according to you. Yeah, I mean, you've lived in L.A. for six years now, and you've not made the way down to San Diego to, to visit the best ballpark in America. That Many people say that. I would love to, like, push back on, like, I know you're smiling, like, it's your team. But uh, truthfully, many people do say, like, obviously, Fenway's got the history. Yankee Stadium's fun. I want to get into the but Yankees. In, in a, but yeah, in modern times, though, there's, there's really not many things that would change about the park in San Diego. I mean, it's kind of weird that the, the bleachers are all still blue. I would love them to change it to to brown, you know, or some iteration of what their team colors are now. But that's about it. I mean, everything else about the park is amazing. They they hold great concerts there all the time and music festivals, uh, Monster Jam. The Holiday Bowl is played there now um, you know, during bowl season. You know, they do some really good events there. And it's, you know, smack in the heart of the Gas M District in beautiful San Diego. Um, you know, you go out into the game and then you go right out and you pop out their bars everywhere. Um, so it's a really fun environment. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed because it was initially at Petco Park, the concert, but they moved it to Snapdragon. Oh, wow. So I'm a little bummed. I thought that would Snap, be the first Snapdragon's time. looking for, for more events there because they, they want to start filling it up. It's a brand new stadium. 
you know, in place of the old Qualcomm that they knocked down and they rebuilt. Um, I, I've seen it from the outside. It looks pretty cool. Haven't gone in yet. It's where San Diego State plays. Um, but I think you'll enjoy that as well. Yeah, and they they're I think they just did a stadium tour, and I think people realized, holy smokes, like we're not going to fit everyone to pet. We need we need a bigger bigger yeah. boat to speak. I think it's um, it's reminiscent of uh, the LAFC's uh, Bank of America Bank of California Stadium in downtown LA. Oh, I love I love a con. We had we've had a great we that was one yeah, of our Rufus better. There. One of our better moves as friends was to run that back to back, even though it was the same exact show. It was an absolute. But it's a not whole different experience each time. Yeah, I know. Would not have done it any differently. Um, okay. Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, you know, tease. Speaking of teasing, speak tease the Yankees a little bit here. I would say them and the Mets. The, the Mets are five hundred. The Yankees are two games above five hundred. Mets are in second place. The Yankees are in the cellar of the AL East, which is crazy. At two games above five hundred. Yeah. Who are you more concerned for? Because right now both teams are not in the playoffs. Who are? It's, I know it's May, but through the first month, who are you most concerned for? I'd probably say the Mets, um, because they have more working against them. They lost Edwin Diaz, you know, in the World Baseball Classic. That was a huge blow. Just got Verlander back. You know, he started a full month on the IL. Scherzer hasn't been that great. And you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I did predict that Scherzer and Verlander would not be all-stars this season. And so far, that's how it's looking. I mean, obviously, we have to see more of Verlander, but you're missing a whole month out of him and he probably, you know, needs to have an amazing next couple of months to really get in there. Um, and they, the Yankees have the best pitcher in baseball right now, Gary Cole. And correct me if I'm wrong, predicted him to be the AL Cy Young and number two NL Cy Young, Zach Gallen. So I'm looking kind of good right now. You are looking very, very strong. I think I had Burns and Bieber. Bieber, they've both been fine. Burns actually a little questionable. Uh, I'll say I'll agree with you on the Mets front, but the Yankees injuries judge now on the IL. I think the stint will be brief. They just get Bader back. Donaldson, the people have made a big deal about it, but he's been on the IL. I don't think that's that big of an issue to me. Personally, I think he's unfortunately a bit over the hill. Rodon's not pitched yet. Severino's on the IL. Loisa is really on the IL for a, for an extended period. John Carl Stanton for I think the fifteenth season in a row is on the IL. And this Yankees team once again is just you know demolished by the injury bug. And I think they ran they ran a risk with Clay Holmes, who was really good in the first half, kind of spotty in the second half as their closer. They're backing Michael King's filled in kind of nicely. I think he, they're going to transition to a more committee role. Michael Kai. Uh and but they're back and they're gonna have to make a move for the bullpen, in my opinion. Um, but I, I will I will side with you that the Mets are a bit more worrisome. But I'm curious to see how Verlander comes back. Scherzer's been brutal, especially like they're, after the sticky stuff. They're a bit more worrisome in the sense that it's a way more attainable division, too. And if you're just sitting there at five hundred and not taking control. I mean, yes, you've got to deal with the Braves, and that could be, you know, the best team in baseball and best team in the in the NL. But I mean, the Yankees have such a gauntlet of a division. I mean, the Rays playing the best baseball since the 1800s. Baltimore has been on fire. You guys have, like you said, won six straight in our five games above 500. Not something that we expected in the month of May. And then the Blue Jays. That's a team that I think some of us were anticipating to be in the World Series this year. You know, they're four games about 500. So that's a treacherous division. Yeah. I mean, the Rays are playing the bet. And we're, we are waiting for the, the shoe to fall on the Rays, especially you. You really are. And so we're kind of like monitoring them. But the bigger story, I mean, the Orioles and the Red Sox, with their pitching, in my eyes, being so questionable, the bats have come alive. Like the Orioles have some serious, serious bats. Mountcastle, Mullins, like these guys are studs, like and very and guys that people I felt felt and Santander are a guy that you liked a lot. Like have we been trying not to like admit them into the club of like okay these guys are really legit ball players and not maybe not superstars but studs, but they're here and they've arrived and Ruxman's like you know the cherry on top. Paul Yanish on his show today on the, on the Farm to Show said he he has shades of Posey. Which is in, uh, which is probably the best catcher of the last decade. I in, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, the three World Series, the MVP, 
no, no, no shake to Joe Maurer, but Posey's one of the best we've ever seen. And Gunnar Henderson, who's not hitting exceptionally well, but he's an on-base machine. The, the Orioles are extremely dangerous, and the Blue Jays have lost five straight. But they're playing – their, their pitching has been as bad as I think it could be. Like Gosman, Berrios, Manoa can turn it up at any moment, and yeah. they can flip the script. And the Red Sox – I mean, I know you guys touched on it last show with that when I was at the dentist, but it's really been I'm 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 hoping I get to eat my words on Heim Bloom. I really am, because it'd be nice for Yoshida to continue to be this. I mean, he's been amazing. Devers is having a great season and proving, you know, hey, and that I looked at that contract now thinking back on it. It was like a move to go, hey, we get we're still the Red Sox we're going to give one of our guys the contract so you, the fans, and the and like the people out there understand that we're not completely changing the model of what this franchise is thought to be. But that being said, we're giving you this one. Trust us to continue to build the rest of the roster. A guy that you and I have talked about for now a couple of years, Marcelo Mayer, who's fortunately in our farm system, has been absolutely raking uh, in the minors. So I'm just counting down the days. And the Trevor Story thing, we'll see. Yeah. But that you're Marcelo right. Marcelo Mayer. A guy who was unknown to Mad Dog. Yeah, what a bum. What a bum. The uh not mayor of Mad Dog. What um I want to yeah. quickly because I'm just looking at the bets that I placed at the beginning of the season before oh, you know yeah, anything. Fun. And I want to see how I I'm, I'm faring up in the first month of baseball. So I took the Padres over 93 and a half wins. That's fine. It's, it's decent. You know, it's still it's still a good chance. This is probably my worst one. Pirates under 67 and a half wins. It's the only thing. And they're, I, they're already like over a fourth of the way there. And I have no problem throwing this back at you because you did do a really good job calling a lot of things so far. I told you that they were going to be better than you thought. You really thought they were going to be that bad. And I told you, I'm like, yeah. I think these, they have something there with some of these young guys and they're back into their bullpen that they could be decent. Not did yeah. I think they'd be this fucking good. Part of my language. No way. Like, no. No way. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. Rangers over 82 and a half. I think that's great looking bet. really good. They're yeah. great. Uh, strikeout leader, Spencer Strider. He's only, I think, two off of the, the lead right now, which is Otani. It's a really good bet. Yep. Uh, that one's at plus 900 odds. Uh, I've got which is Otani. Str- yep. A Suri <laughs> Ruiz, the stolen base leader. Right now, he's second behind uh, Okuna. He's at 13 and Kuna's at 15. That's plus 600 odds. Bo Bichette, the hit leader. Right now he's leading the MLB in hits. Uh, that's at plus 850. Uh, home run leader. I don't know how this is looking, but Mike Trout, plus 900. He can get it back, but he, he whoa, needs whoa, to. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's got eight. Yeah, he's got eight. But, I mean, there's guys that have 12 and 11. I mean, that's not a huge gap. Okay. Yeah, dude, that's nothing, bro. I mean, Mike, right, right. if there's anyone that could close that gap, True. true you're true it's very true i have him over 38 and a half home runs as well so at eight so far i mean that's i think he's on pace for that um i have jose ramirez as the rbi leader and i don't think he's anywhere near the top of that right now that's just because their their team is just not hitting as well as i'd like them to and then to win the west the padres i mean you know we'll see how that happens and of course i have the padres win the world series so so far so good with all the props at least <laughs> We had to sneak that last bit in there. Uh, well, I mean, come on. Am I not going to make that bet this season? No, you had to. You had to. I I'm, mean, I'm running with my boy, Zach Gitlin. Yeah, the, 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 the bets you have outstanding, right? I mean, the Strider bet alone, that's got to the, the Strider bet and the Yuri Ruiz one. Like, obviously, we would never wish ill upon anybody from an injury standpoint, but Acuna has had a number of close calls, and Ruiz is a fantastic bet. He's knocking on the door. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he's got two less steals in Acuna and, you know, Acuna fouled one off his leg the other day and went down and, and went, I mean, that, McGill beat not... him in the, sh- I was watching it live. McGill beat him in the shoulder. Yeah. And then like Bo Bichette leading the league in hits. I mean, oh, yeah. Acuna also right there, right behind him with one less hit, but I mean, Bichette's, Bichette's a, a hitting machine. I would, he is, he's that thousand. That, that was a really good forecast of, what we saw at the end of last year in that August and September and smart by you to ride that shed is it, I guess I'll tailor this in is your MVP so far in the NL Acuna. Cause he's mine. 
Um, yeah, I think I would have to say he is. Um, I mean, let's just throw this out there though. If Larissa Reyes hits 400 for the whole season, I know that's ridiculous, but if he's hitting like 380 at the end of the season, even 360, how can you not give it to him? No, 360 now. Not even? Maggie or Donius. Maggie or is at 366 one year, I think, and on the top of my head, something like that. And he didn't hit. I will say Maurer hit 364, I believe, his MVP okay. season. So 370 to 380. Anything above that. I Bro, mean, if he he's hits, only got one home run. He needs to he needs to hit for more power. But dude, if he's hitting like close to 400, how can you not give it to him? If he hits 380, that would be one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, Tony Gwynn did it. Yeah, okay, and Tony Gwynn is arguably is the, known as the one of the best pure hitters of all time. Like, what's yeah, Ichiro, what's Ichiro's career high? Like three seventy something. Like, if this guy hits three eighty, that would be the. If someone hit three eighty, that would be one of the craziest things I've ever seen. What's he at? Right? What's our eyes at right now? Four, he's at four twenty. Hey, hey. That four rising at four twenty is one of the most. That already uh, in itself okay. is absurd. So, so Ichiro's career high three seventy two, three seventy two in two thousand four, and he did not win the MVP. He was seventh in MVP voting because he only had eight home runs. Enjoy the enjoy your steroid era, bro. I mean, that actually hurts your argument. It does. I think the one thing you have going for you right now, what's the war looking like? Oh my god, this is ridiculous. The guy's hitting 424. That's good. Dude, Arias is seventh in war in the in the MLB. There you go. So that like he's he's doing a lot of things well. But right now, the NL MVP's gotta be Acuna. Right now, yes. I will say he's him his on base percentage is also 482. I mean, no surprise he's hitting 442. But Dude, guess how many times Arias has struck out? Do you have it in front of you? And in, in 99 at bats. I think it's like under 10, right? I don't five. have it in front of me. Five. It, it says he has six. Okay. Am I looking he's up? updated? I think he's playing oh, right now. He is playing right now. He might have struck out today. He's yeah, the it's Cubs and the Marlins are it's ridiculous. Uh okay. Any other Who's been the biggest surprise to you? Maybe like what's your which which small market team? Pirates, D backs. Um, there's another one I had in there. I mean, clearly the Pirates. <laughs> and, okay, and Orioles. Yeah, no, I wasn't surprised by the Orioles. I, I called. Which, that. I, I knew that. So you think that's the most sustainable of the three? Uh, out of the Pirates, Orioles, and who? Diamondbacks. Oh well, no, I'm not surprised by them either. I mean, I. We've, we've already been on them for a while and that me and my co-host born and Azari of the ring the bell podcast we've been telling heath bell that these diamondbacks can be pesky all season long i mean they're they play good small ball you know they've got a great manager they've got a good young core um i'm not surprised by those two at all i'm surprised by the, the pirates i don't know if that's sustainable to be completely honest no i'm with you i'm i'll wait i'm more I'm surprised by the St. Louis Cardinals of how bad they blow right now. I can't believe their pitching it. is so bad. Dude, they're they pitching are is... 12, they are 12 games under 500, but they only have a minus 23 run differential. They're scoring a lot of runs, but their pitching is just so bad. But it's not even like the highest runs allowed in the NL. The Phillies are. Isn't that crazy? Oh yeah. Phillies yeah, pitching. The Phillies, the Phillies, like them, their pitching's no, always the, like the, 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 the Rockies are the number one right now. For are they? Oh, oh my god! I mean, they, they play in Colorado. Well, the number one in all of baseball is the Athletics, oh who have two hundred and forty-four runs allowed. What a poor franchise! What is, is that? The okay. If they let up a thousand runs this year, would that be the most pathetic thing you've ever seen in baseball? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're going to let up a thousand runs this year. We're let, we're like almost a quarter of the way in, and they've let up more than a quarter of or of a thousand. Like it's gonna happen, dude. I really don't know if they're gonna win forty games this season. They have six no. wins, dude. No way. How can they win a game? 
how can they feasibly go into a game tonight and be like, all right, we're going to win this? I thing. mean, out, outscoring people. They've got a couple of guys on their team that are hitting, hitting really well. Okay. You think Rooker's going to keep this up? I don't. Probably not. We see this every year. I could list guys that people would be like, oh, yeah, I remember when he had like 16 home runs in the first two months. Like, I remember when Johnny Gum, shout out to him, had like two home runs, 16 home runs, like the first month and a half. Everyone's like, this is the next big thing. And like, he never hit, he had like two more the rest of the year. Yeah. Hey, Brett Ricker, seven at bats for the Padres, no hits last season. Brett, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> Brett Ricker. Classic. But Brett they have Brooker, he, Brett, Brett, Brett. Yeah, I said Brett called him Brent. The, uh, no, his name is Brent Rooker. Brent. Okay, I had it. Yeah, I had it right. He's on my fan. He's he's doing he's doing a little time on my fantasy team. I'm trying to ride his wave. I got my fantasy team in one league, Nick. Since you gave your bets, I'll give you. I'm three zero oh, and one, tied in first place, and then the other one, I'm three and one. Not bad. Nice. Not bad at all. Not bad. You know who's been really good? Bellinger. Yeah, I mean, he's only on a one-year deal, too. So, what a bet on yourself! Could, could, could you see the Dodgers just saying, "All right, we'll give you the money next next season"? I think he'll go to whoever will give him the money. No, it's what I'm saying that you think the Dodgers will be like, "Okay, you had your little stint in Chicago, you got to find yourself again. You know, you took your little study abroad trip, you know, you explored other other holes, yeah. and uh, come home." Okay. Fine. Yeah, maybe they do. But if you're him, do you accept that? I mean, he was lo- He was beloved in L.A. And ultimately, you want to put him in the best position to win, too. Like, I mean, what other team? I mean, sure, he's going to get offers from elsewhere. But, like, the Dodgers realistically could be his best chance to win on the World Series. True. I, I mean, um, that's how you and I operate. Sometimes these guys don't operate. Like, you think Chris Bryant was like, you know what? Colorado's really yeah. got it going on. Let me yeah. go get another ring. Dansby. Like, he was like Dansby. He was, I mean, hey, they are pretty decent. So maybe, but yeah, they, some of these guys go to the highest bidder. Like even Freddie Freeman went to the highest. Yeah. Yes, but he went to the Dodgers. It's not like he went to, you know, the Nationals or he went to like Detroit. <laughs> when, when the Braves win the World Series before the Dodgers do again. Is he going to be like the most depressed person in baseball? Well, do you remember what came, it came out that his agent like didn't tell him the offer that the Braves made? Remember, like his agent screwed him over because he wanted him to be on the Dodgers, so he didn't tell him that the Braves actually made an offer, and Freddie was pissed off. I think Freddie actually wanted to stay in Atlanta. Yeah, so, yeah wouldn't probably, you? so he probably he would be the most depressed person in baseball. That'd be sad for him, but I, I really. To me, I think the Braves are such a juggernaut. Like, I don't, their farm systems, I don't get it. They like, they're similar to the Padres, except they hang on to the guys. Like, they don't like yeah. let them go. Well, they, 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 their ability to produce is, is pretty wild. I think it's been an unbelievable first month of baseball. Continue to keep our eye out on everything. Uh, and yeah, let's head into a great week. And I'm glad your bets are doing. Well, Nick, maybe we can make like a small graphic of like and track them. Like, I'll go through back through and see how you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely boast how well I'm doing. Hopefully, it doesn't bite me in the butt. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's good. I think we could do a monthly check in. I'm like, okay, yeah, check in. A, hum- it's like a humbling check in, a humbling check because some of them they're not all hitting. So, I think it's like, I think you're okay. And like, if you play both sides, all right, Fisher, Snacks, Carter, enjoy the weekend. We'll see you guys next time.